This is Minimalish. I'm your host, Desiree, and before we get started, let me be clear. This podcast isn't just about minimalism. It's a podcast about living fully. Over the past few years, I've learned that living with a little less in our homes and on our calendars leads to less cluttering up our minds, which simply helps give us the space to give our time and thoughts to the things that actually matter. So what do we talk about on here? We talk about minimalism and decluttering and how to get there, yes. But we also have conversations about pursuing intentionality in the things that matter, like our motherhood, faith, relationships, work, and mindset. Minimalish is a podcast for the women committed to contentment and loving the life in front of them, committed to living with a little less so they can create space for the things that matter most. What it's not about, how many spoons you should have, or any kind of rules or legalistic minimalism that promises you'll be happier if you just get rid of more stuff. Getting rid of stuff isn't what will make you happy. It's about the life you live with the new space you find. If that sounds good to you, grab a mug of whatever you like and stick around. I'm so grateful you're here. Hi friends, welcome back to Minimalish. This is episode 75. I don't know why, I just almost messed up that number. I'm your host, Desiree, and I am so excited to be sharing with you today an episode on the KonMari method, probably one of the most well-known strategies to approaching decluttering. I'm gonna be honest with you and tell you that I have not read The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. I know that should probably not be allowed. I shouldn't be allowed to talk about decluttering and minimalism without reading that book, right? But my husband and I decluttered before I even knew that book existed. And I actually never really thought that I had a need to read another book that told me how to declutter if we had already done it. But after talking with Mandy today, who is our expert on the KonMari method, she gives such practical tips. She really gives us a rundown on what the KonMari method is. So I feel like after talking to her, I wanna go read the book now, but either way, I did watch the special on Netflix. I had a good idea of what the KonMari method was all about. And this conversation that I had with Mandy just gave me an even better idea about it. And I think it's a great way to start out if you are looking to declutter your home. I do want to note that yesterday, not even 24 hours ago, I put out a bonus episode where I just talked pretty openly and honestly about what's going on in the world today with you all. As I'm recording this intro, our country is basically shutting down and a lot of other countries are doing the same. We are self-quarantining or we are mandated quarantining. I don't know. You know, different states are doing different things. Different countries are doing different things. But the world is a strange and scary place to be right now. So I just want to note that I did approach that in a bonus episode yesterday. I did not want to attach that conversation to this episode because I want this episode to be its own thing. I want someone to be able to come five months down the road and listen to this and not have to think about what is happening in the world today as they're listening to this show. So with that said, if you are stuck in your house a little bit more than normal and if you somehow find yourself with extra time or your kids are at home and it feels a little chaotic, I recommend do some decluttering if that's something that's been on your list. I know it might seem hard with your whole family home, but you can do it. I've talked about decluttering several times on this podcast. I've had a lot of guests talk about it with me, share their story of how they've done it, but this episode is a great one to start with, and Mandy talks about how she decluttered with three kids at home and with a full-time job with a busy life in the midst of busy everyday life. So if we happen to find ourselves a little less busy right now, I know not all of us are in that situation, but if we do, I actually decided to put out this episode earlier than I was planning to because I want to give you a resource to get started if so. I also put together a list of other resources such as home workouts, my favorite shows, and just a couple of other decluttering resources, which you can find at DesireAndries.com slash stuck at home. It's an email I sent out to my email list, but you can go and grab that email right now and it just has a bunch of resources for you. Mandy also is right now sharing about decluttering with kids on her Instagram. So if you go follow her at among all of this on Instagram, you can get the rundown on all of that. She's a KonMari consultant trainee, so she knows her stuff and she's really good at helping people declutter. She is going to tell us more about herself, more about what she does. So let's just dive into this conversation as she gives us the rundown on the KonMari method. 
I'm so excited today to have my friend Mandy on. We've kind of met through Instagram. Your account is among all of this. And then you have a website and services all around that. So thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. I discovered and started listening to Minimalish last year. It must have been after you pivoted because when you talked about that, I then, then I went back to your previous show. But um, I've been hooked since. Well, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you enjoy listening. And I love following you and love your content that you put out there into the world. And you talk a lot about KonMari and decluttering through that method and how that's impacted you. And then you help others do the same. So first of all, can you give a little bit more insight into who you are and what you do? Well, I'm from the Twin Cities area, Minnesota. I live with my husband and our three girls. They are currently nine, no, 13, nine and five. And the funny thing is that I met my husband in 10th grade. So we are high school sweethearts and we went to school in this tiny town and we were both like, we're going to move out together to a big city when we were growing up. And um, we are grown up. We are still together, but we're still not that far from that town. I have just grown to love it here. And I guess I'm not as adventurous as I thought I'd be, but I am busy. So I work good busy. So I work full time as a social worker. I've been doing this for 10 years now. And my husband also works in the helping profession. He's in the law enforcement field. Then just last year, I got into home organizing on the side. And now I'm finishing up my training to be a Marie Kondo consultant. And then I also started an Etsy shop this year, making custom labels for those who are wanting to take their organization up a notch. Okay, that's awesome. I I thought that you worked full time aside from what you do and share online. And that was something I was going to ask you because it sounds like you do a lot. And I, you know, it sounds like, did your family kind of go through and declutter and everything while you were working full time? Yes, yes. I've always worked full time. So yes, we went through the Kamari method during all of that with three kids. I think at the time, my youngest was, she was two, probably, no, she was three. So we had three kids and two full-time jobs and we still made it through the method. Yeah, that's so comforting, I'm sure, to people who are hearing this, because I know that's a question I get a lot. I mean, I was working more than full time when we decluttered, but now when I speak about what we do and everything, it's coming from someone that I do work, but it's from home and it's just different. So I love hearing perspectives too from full time working moms. Plus, you've got all your side things going because I just think it gives inspiration to those who feel like I have so much going on. How am I going to find space for this? So let's dig into that a little bit. You know, why did you choose KonMari and what is it in a nutshell? If you can, the listeners know who, who maybe don't know. And why is this the method to which you approach decluttering and minimalism and in your family in general? Sure. Well, in 2014, a Japanese tidying expert published a little book here in the United States called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Her name is Marie Kondo. Listeners might have heard of her, or if not, they probably know of the question, or now it's becoming more of a statement, does this spark joy? So Kanmari, or also known as the Kamari Method, is just taking part of her last name and her first name together. Now, about the method, Marie stresses that it's more than just a set of rules on how to sort and organize and put things away. It's really a reflective process to help folks develop and be comfortable with the thinking skills needed to be a tidier person. Essentially, it's a mindful way to sort through your things and take care of them well, whether they remain with you or not, and learn about yourself along the way. I think the Kamari method is great for anyone who could use more joy in their life, but especially it's perfect for anyone who feels stressed over the amount of things they have. This is perfect for anyone who wants to declutter, but isn't sure how and where they feel overwhelmed and don't even know where to start. This is perfect for anyone going through a transition in life who is ready to move on to the next phase. I've worked with women who have gone through a divorce 
or are widowed, all the way to moms who have decided that they are done growing their family and want to part the baby stuff. You know, baby things are so emotional. It's more than just the stuff. Or mamas who are just in the midst of it all, realizing that while these days feel so long, the years are short and they want to make the most of being present with their families, not their things. And I think this is why this method of simplifying spoke to me more. My home environment has such an impact on me. When there is a lot of stuff, especially stuff I don't use or want, it really re- affects how I feel. And as a mom, we are a huge part in setting the tone for our families. I felt like I could relax and connect more when my home was easy to tidy up. Now, notice I didn't say that it always has to be tidy, but just, you know, is easy to tidy up. I definitely don't want to have a magazine home. I want to have a home that's lived in, but also one that doesn't take an hour to clean up. I don't want to ask my kids to clean up more than I ask them about how their day is going. So while I have gone through my home in the past and got rid of things and it felt great, that level of organization and tidiness never stayed. Slowly over time, things would start to accumulate again. I would feel overwhelmed again because I didn't change. You know, when people think of decluttering, they probably think of going around the house with a garbage bag and finding things that they can toss or donate. But in the Kamari method, the focus is on choosing what you want to keep, what brings you joy, not immediately what you want to get rid of. It's a more gentler approach for folks who have a hard time letting go of things. And it's effective for those who start to declutter and then they become stuck. Most of all, Kamari is for anyone who is open and willing to explore themselves. This is one of those things I feel like where you truly get what you put in. Just because you methodically follow the method doesn't mean that your life will change. The life changes happen when you follow the method and allow for that reflection. Because the secret to the Kamari method, you know, between you and me, Desiree, and everyone else who's <laughs> listening, is that not only well, the way your home looks change, but also the way that you think will change. So I like to think of both just traditional decluttering and the Kamari method as neither good or bad. They both can lead you to the same destination, which is ultimately to having a more intentional life where you're spending your time and energy on things and people that matter to you. Which route you choose to take there depends on you and your needs, but neither one is good or bad. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And I think it's such an important step in the process that we acknowledge that this isn't just about, you know, our home having less stuff in it. It's about changing us and and changing our families and the way that we experience life and and growing, being able to have that space to be closer together. I love that you said you want to be able to, you know, have conversations with your family, not always even that kind of nagging feeling when you're telling your kids like, we need to clean up our rooms. I just think that has to resonate with so many people listening right now. So I want to know what you talked a little bit about, you know, discovering the book and everything, but what led your family to really take this step in decluttering your home? What did that pain point, I guess, that, that got you there look like in your life? I started with a move, a move to the house that we're in right now. So this is house number two for us. And when we were getting ready to sell our first house, I went to a ton of open houses and because we were looking for our next home. and. It just, like, even if I didn't like the layout of the house, it just, it felt so calming. And I realized it was because, number one, it was staged. But, you know, being staged just means that there isn't a lot of stuff around. And so because we're getting ready to sell our first house so we could buy a second house, I did a lot of staging for a house. So I decluttered a lot. And I did so many trips to Goodwill. I posted things for sale on Craigslist, like back in the day, you still use Craigslist, um, did some stuff on Facebook Marketplace. And I even got to the point where it was like, I just want this stuff out of my house. I posted it on Facebook 
It's free. Just come and get it. Mm -hmm. So I did all of that and we rented a U-Haul and I wouldn't say like it's one particular pain point, but it was like just a series of events that was just like, wow, you know, I just can't believe that we're getting to this point. So the first thing, the first red flag, I guess, um, was when we were getting ready to move and we filled up one U-Haul. We rented just one U-Haul and we filled it up and we still had a bunch of stuff. So my husband had to go out and rent a second U-Haul. So we showed up to this new house with two U-Haul trucks, which uh, I was just... I don't know. I was just so <laughs> embarrassed. I was just, I just felt so defeated. Like, especially after I put in all of that work, we still showed up with two U-Haul trucks. So that was a huge moment for me. And it wasn't like we were moving to a bigger place or anything. Our The house that we moved from in this house right now, I mean, they're around the same um, square footage. So we didn't add any more square footage. So then I told my husband, okay, just have everyone unload stuff from the moving trucks into the garage. We have a three car garage and we're not going to bring anything in. So they did that and the garage was filled. We couldn't park our cars in there, but you know, everything stayed in the garage. So I said, okay, so now let's just slowly bring in what we need. And then we did. And over time, I would say in a period about like three months, I looked into my garage we could still only park one car now we could park a car but it was just one car and we still had a bunch of stuff in there I would say after three months we still had around like 60% of things that were in boxes and so then I told my husband okay obviously we don't need this so let's let all that you know let's let all this go which we did and it felt great you know I felt like I could relax in my home for once I wasn't worried about cleaning up or Uh, making things tidy. I felt like the walls could breathe. Not every inch was filled with, you know, a decoration or a picture frame. I realized that I liked that. And so it was great, but it didn't last. You know, slowly over time, I started to notice these piles of things um, like school carnival freebies that the kids would get from school, just like piling up. Papers would start piling up and it just again the stuff started to just creep in and so then that's when I discovered Marie Kondo's book and read it and my husband and I completed it within a period of I would say a month and a half under two months yeah and it sounds like from what you talked about before and from your story it sounds like it really for you must have been that kind of like mindset shift that that the KonMari method offered that helped because I know for us as we've kind of gone through similar phases of realizing you know the stuff comes back in (laughs) and you know is this just a forever cycle not that we can ever make it so that stuff isn't ever coming in our house yes but the cycle stops that constant pace whenever we really do shift our mindset but I want to hear more about just kind of a step-by-step breakdown of decluttering and organizing the KonMari way. I know that you offer services to help people with this, and I think that's so amazing, and you're really an expert on this, so I can't wait to hear more from you. So as much as you can tell us in you know the short time we have together, what are some of the step-by-steps? Oh, goodness, like so much to say. Um, <laughs> I'm going to share a couple of the philosophies of the method and then the real-life how to do this. So what most people know about the Kamari method, other than the focus on keeping things that spark joy, is the way that it's done. To Kamari, you tidy by category, not location. So you don't start in the garage or in the basement or in a junk drawer. There is a specific order to the categories. It's clothing, then books, papers, kimono, which is Japanese for miscellaneous items and includes everything else in your home, like your bed linens, seasonal decorations, toiletries, your spare light bulbs, and all of the kitchen stuff. And then finally, sentimental. This is the final category and it can look different from person to person because how we define what sentimental is so personal. What can be a ratty t-shirt to you could you know, might be a priceless high school memorabilia to me. But usually in this category, everyone has the photos, the family heirlooms, the wedding dress, 
or the wedding dresses. Mm -hmm. Um, Moms will often have their children's first shoes, their going home outfits. I've even seen baby teeth, a lot of baby teeth, (laughs) a variety of stuff because throughout the categories, if something is sentimental, if it means more than what the actual item is, we put it in the sentimental category and move on and then we come back to it when we get to the end. So the reason why this method is done this way is because it starts with the easiest category of clothing and trains you for the hardest category of sentimental things. I don't know how many times I used to try to declutter and then 10 minutes in, I'm sitting there and I'm reading old letters from my friends in middle school for like two hours. So it was not a productive way of doing things. By starting with an easy category and working your way up, when you reach that last category, you would have made thousands of decisions on what to keep. So your decision-making skills are more refined. And I find that it's not so mentally draining to make choices when you are working with similar items. You're not deciding which spatula to keep and then which bracelet to keep and then which stationary set to keep. All of that can happen if you open up a kitchen drawer in some houses. That is a lot of decluttering detours. Also, decluttering this way allows you to see how much you have of something. Let me tell you, there's nothing like finding nine pairs of scissors when you feel like no one in your home can find the scissors and they're always coming to you like you are the scissor manager. Like, Don't ask me. (laughs) I know that experience. It could just be really eye-opening. So by tidying by a specific Um, in a specific order of categories, not by room or area. It's a cornerstone to the Kamari method. Another important philosophy, and I feel like this is the one that most people forget about, um, is that the Kamari method is meant to be done once in your life. That's not to say that you will never declutter and organize again. You will. You know, seasons of life will change. Your interests and hobbies will evolve. Family structures will expand. Things will wear out. But when you do have to tidy up, it will no longer feel overwhelming because your ability to make decisions will be refined and you will probably not have so much unnecessary stuff to deal with. So I always tell my clients, let's do it well so you can do it once. Now, I'm not going to lie, it is an intense process. You will handle every item in your home, the ones that belong to you or the ones that you manage. As a consultant, I'm there to assist guide you and hold you accountable, but you are the one doing the work, which means you will be the one to get the results and the skills for life. Okay, so moving to the actual method, what does it mean to Kamari your home? A lot of people will say, I can marry my home, or I can marry my bedroom, or I can marry my refrigerator. But to actually have Kamari your home, you have to complete each of the five categories, clothing, books, papers, kimono, and sentimental in order. And the process for each of the categories and the subcategories is the same. First you gather, then you sort, and then you joy check, and then you store well. And as for storage and organization, some of the principles are to store vertically or upright, hence the Marie Kondo file folding of clothing, which is really popular. It is to create a home for each item, use modular containers, and repurposing as much as you can. And Can I clarify something about joy checking, about the idea of things sparking joy? Please do. (laughs) I think there are two definitions. The first one is simple and very physical. Just think of your favorite color, your favorite slippers, your favorite blanket. It's very innate. And for me, it feels like a tightening in my heart area, like a happy tightening in my heart area. There is no question when something instantly sparks joy. The other definition is the one not as widely known, but so important and most widely used in this method. It is about gratitude. You can find joy by being grateful. Something may not instantly give you that sparking joy feeling, but if you need to keep it, you can find joy in that by acknowledging how it serves you and your family and then take care and store it well so that it can continue to serve you. Marie has this theory that our things want to serve us. So if they aren't able to do so anymore, it's time to let them go. And if they do, it's important to store them well. A set of mixing bowls may not spark joy for you, but if you can find it and use it when you need it, that's joy right there. You don't have to throw everything away that 
doesn't instantly spark joy. Or if you are no longer going to keep an item by taking a moment to thank it for what it's done for you or even what it's taught you. You know, let's say you're letting go of a, a shirt, you know, just to acknowledge that you have taught me that purple is just not my color. <laughs> that is <laughs> gratitude. And gratitude breeds joy. Yeah, that's, I love that. I love that part of it. I know that it's definitely a step towards contentment to be able to see what you have. And even if it's not, you know, the best version that you could a picture that would be in your house, like if you have a chair that is serving its purpose and maybe eventually you want to replace that chair, but you don't have the funds for it right now, you know, our impulses. I need, I think when people hear that spark joy idea, it's like my whole house has to look perfectly the way that I want it, but instead being grateful for the way those items serve you if you really, you can't replace it right now or you, you need that item, you can't really get rid of it. Exactly. I hope you're enjoying today's episode, but I'm going to take a break to thank today's sponsor. If you have stress or anxiety or chronic pain or trouble sleeping, you're not alone. Personally, I have struggled with anxiety and it often keeps me from being completely present with the people that I love. I was searching for something natural that could help this and I discovered Feels. Feels is premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep and it helps naturally reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. I personally can feel a difference in my anxiety when I use Feels. It's easy to take. You can place a few drops of Feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. The thing to remember about CBD is finding the right dosage for you. Everyone's dose is different, so it's important that you can leave room to find the right dose over the first week or so of use. The best part about Feels is that they have real human support. They offer a CBD hotline that is totally free to help guide you in your experience in general and to help you find the right dosage for you. Feels helps you feel better naturally and there's no high or hangover or addiction at all when it comes to CBD. You can join the Feels community to get Feels delivered straight to your door every month. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel at any time. Feels can help you feel better naturally. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash minimalist and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash minimalist to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash minimalist with a T at the end, minimalist. All right, let's get back to today's show. So I want to know, is uh-huh. this, does this method, do you think that it can truly help someone who is a disorganized person or who has been a messy person all of their life become more organized through following this method? Is there a step in the method that helps that happen? Or what, what kind of creates that? Because I'm sure you work with people who are like that. I am like that. <laughs> so that's why I'm asking. <laughs> sure. I know people who are listening. I, I don't think I'm just asking this for me, but even if I am. <laughs> yeah, sure. I think the, the process of decluttering and really thinking about what's important to you can be helpful because the thing is that you can't organize clutter. And I'm not even talking about just physical clutter, but actually, you know, mental clutter, like things on your to-do list or things on your schedule or even personal expectations that you have of yourself that can lead to some disorganization too. So I feel like through the process of just following the method of gathering, sorting, joy checking, storing your items, it can lead to those life changes to happen and for you to feel more organized in other areas of your life. I always tell my clients, just trust in the method and allow it to lead you. Yeah, that's so good. And I think the idea of the like taking care and storing your items part, a lot of that phrase with minimalism that people will often say of you can't organize clutter or it's not about organization. It's about decluttering. That's Mm. a true first step, but there comes a point (laughs) in the process where, you know, we can't leave out that organization and, and really I had to, and I'm currently really teaching myself how to do that. I do think that some people obviously naturally tend towards organization a little bit more than others, but it's also something that can be learned. 
It least. can. Yes, it can. <laughs> That's what I'm learning right now, at least. <laughs> um, okay, so I was looking through your Instagram the other day, not in a creepy way. <laughs> I do this for research, but I also love just, I am so inspired by all that you put out there. And one quote that you said, which is from Marie Kondo says, your life can start after you've put your home in order. Can you talk more about this quote, how it rings true in your life? How has this process of decluttering and organizing your home led to starting, you know, starting your life? Yeah. And maybe this will answer that previous question you had about can a person ever, can a messy person ever become tidy? So people think that we do what we do because of how we feel, which is true, but how we feel is because of what we think. So if we want to do differently to get different outcomes, we have to think differently. The Kamari method is about changing your way of thinking. When you change your thoughts, you change your actions. For me, after we completed the Kamari method, it led us to paying off $34,000 of debt. So it That's still awesome. feels, <laughs> thank you. It still feels unreal that we did that. I mean, our salaries didn't change, but you know what did change? was the way that we thought of and used our time and money. Because when you go through your entire home, you confront a lot of your old decisions. I realized that I would accept things from others and keep them out of obligation, out of fear that somehow our relationship would be damaged. When I was dealing with an unpleasant emotion, I would distract myself and go shopping. And then I would get home and feel more unpleasant emotions for using money on things I didn't need. And then of course, I would feel stressed about all this clutter in my home, you know, clutter that I had brought in. I would hang on to clothing because I kept thinking, oh, I spent a lot of money on this or I'll get down to that size again. And you know what? It wasn't really about that size. It was more about what I realized. It was more about who I was when I was that size and the money it wasn't gone on that item. It was actually getting more expensive because now I charged it on a credit card and it was accumulating interest. Or I, if I had that money, I spent that money and now I couldn't buy something else that I needed. So after we combined our home, I had the space to think about what to do with our time. Suddenly we had more time, it felt like, and more energy. And I didn't want to shop anymore, or at least not in the same way that I used to do. I used to go to the mall with the kids on the weekends, like just for fun, just for something to do. Now we go for walks. We do things together at home. We do things with other people. And get this, we also found that we had more money. Again, we weren't making more money, but I guess in a way we were because we were spending less. So I, we used this newfound space in our life and created a budget. Never had one before. We used cash envelopes. Never have I valued a penny so much. And we planned for expenses with sinking funds so that when the time came for something like back to school shopping for the kids or if a car all of a sudden needed a repair, we had the money and we weren't putting it on a credit card. And I think that Tidying up your home naturally leads to tidying up other areas of your life because you've changed. Your home has changed, so your life will change. Similar to how parenthood changes you. There's your life before kids and after kids. I always tell people, when you complete the method, you will think of your life as pre-Kamari and post-Kamari. That's the magic of tidying up. And I think... I mean, your life now, as you described it in the beginning and all of the things that you do, people can look at that and think, how do you have three kids, work full time, have your, you know, help people declutter their homes and also have your Etsy business. And then talking now, you're saying we spend time with people. We take walks with our kids. You have space in your life to do this. And it's just such a testament to before minimalism for so many of us and before KonMari or whatever method, a lot of times we, we feel like life is chaos and after it, not that there's not chaos or not problems, but there's, there's space, there's space to go through and deal with that. I've loved this conversation so much and it's inspiring me, but I want to know what is the first step 
that you suggest? What are some resources even that you suggest people go to um, who would want to begin decluttering and feel like, man, maybe this will be the method that is going to work for them? So I'm going to talk about a few things. Um, number one, read the book. Or if you don't like reading, listen to the audiobook. Attend a workshop meet with a Kamari consultant, even if it's just for an introductory lesson. This is an intense process and we're there to guide you and make sure that you complete the method. Or you can totally do this on your own and if you choose to do so, find support through a friend. Join an online Kamari Facebook group. Have others keep you motivated and accountable. And then also I would recommend to block out time. Remember that the Kamari method is meant to be done once in your life. So just like you would plan a life event, like a wedding, a baby shower, it takes time and because it's important and you want to do it well. So clear your schedule, arrange for the childcare. This is time to invest in you and it's not going to be forever. But I would say the most important thing is to create a vision. Clarify your why. Two exercises that... I do with my clients to help uncover that vision is either to picture your ideal day. What does it look like when you first wake up in the morning? How do you feel? What do you do throughout the day? And then look for themes. Or if you're a more visual person, go on Pinterest and pin photos of inspirational homes and then narrow it down to your top three and then look for themes there. What colors did you pick up over and over again? How does that home feel? And I think most importantly, what kind of person lives there? The Kamari method is amazing, but it is a lot of work. I always tell my clients, it gets worse before it gets better. One of the top reasons why people don't complete the method is that they don't take that time to develop their vision. So it's so helpful to have goals that you can refer back to when you're feeling unsure or exhausted because you will, but it will be so worth it when you finish. Yeah, so good. And thank you for sharing those exercises that you do with your clients. If someone was wanting support in this, um, where where can they kind of look for your services or even your labels, which are super cute, by the way? <laughs> where can oh, that all be found? <laughs> thank you. Yeah, they can just go to the website among all of this dot com. Okay, awesome. And that's your username on Instagram as well. So everyone can find you there, which I'm sure they'll want to. Um, so I have two questions that I end with to ask every guest. And the first one is, what's something that you're simplifying right now? Oh my gosh. So this is kind of embarrassing. Um, you know that <laughs> saying, the shoemaker's children are often barefoot? That yeah. is so true in my home. In my Etsy shop and for some of my Kamari clients I make these custom children's memory boxes. It comes with their kiddo's name on the front and inside are 20 hanging files from all the way from baby years to 12th grade. And the purpose is to have one place to store all the special papers for your kids throughout the years so that they're not scattered throughout their home. And it plus it helps you to see how much you have because when everything matters, nothing matters. So <laughs> that's what I'm simplifying right now for my kids. They're special papers. I make this amazing organization tool for others, but not all my kids have one set up yet. I saved the papers, but now I'm working through that pile and I'm actually putting it into the files. So that's what I'm simplifying right now. That's awesome. I love that. I love the, the bins that, you know, you can put everything in one place and especially with the kids' memories. And I only have, my daughter's only two and a half, but I feel like I'm already gathering they accumulate. yeah they accumulate <laughs> fast okay so the last question I have is what is something that you can't stop talking about okay so this is not home organization related it is That's silly a, okay <laughs> it's a tv show on netflix called Shit's creek have you heard of it yes yes I okay. have and I've watched a couple of episodes but I haven't really gotten into it yet Oh my gosh, that's right. You have to. So it's spelled um, S-C-H-I-T-T-S Creek. And while I don't set aside much time for TV, like I will create the space for the show. That's the thing, right? You will create space for things that are important to you. Yeah. Um, 
it's hilarious, but a sweet comedy that follows a very rich and privileged LA family as they lose all of their money and then they go and live in this small town that they bought as a joke. And I think what I love about this show, aside from it being so funny, is that while they never stop being themselves, you know, each family is such a character and my favorite is David. I wish he was my friend in real life. You <laughs> see them eventually settle, flourish, and you see them realize that the best things in life are the relationships that you have with others. Yeah. I love TV shows that you can really learn from and I feel like the best ones you can. So that's been on my list to watch more of because I have another friend who talks about it all the time. So I need, now I know. Okay. <laughs> when you hear it from more than one place, it's like, okay, yes, it's time I'll to start it. watching it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mandy. This has been, it's inspired me. I know it will inspire everyone who's listening. So thanks again for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was a joy to talk. All right, friend, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Minimalish. I hope it inspires you to, if you have extra time this week or in the next following weeks or months or whatever that might look like for all of us right now, if you have extra time or if you just want to put your effort into decluttering whenever you're listening to this episode, I hope it gave you some tools to really get started. And again, as Mandy said, there are so many resources to take this further, whether you reach out to Mandy and work with her or you get the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. They are all great resources to help you apply the KonMari method in your home. If you're looking for further resources on minimalism, I have a free resource that you can grab at DesireeEndries.com slash make room. We talk more than just about decluttering in that resource. We also talk about minimalism for our schedules, minimalism for our mindset, which I think is, of course, equally as important as the clutter in our homes. With all of that said, if you have friends who want to declutter their homes and you think that this episode would be helpful to them. If you're loving this episode, then could you share it with them? You could text it to a friend. You could share it on Instagram. If you do share it on Instagram, tag me so that I can see it. I'm so encouraged by you sharing and inviting more people into this community. It keeps me going week after week. That's all for today's episode, and I will meet you right back here again next week.